Today we're testing the cheapest lithium iron phosphate cells on the market. And the manufacturer is EVE and these are 280 amp hour cells. And for four of these, it was only $416. That includes tax and shipping. But we should not get our hopes up yet. We need to test these because we have been ripped off many times before. And the reason they're so incredibly cheap is they are grade B cells. But for the price, I don't think you can beat them. This is the most capacity for the price that I can find online right now. But they have an intact barcode and on the side it says scratch. For grade B, if the terminals look nasty, they will still call them grade B. But I'm more curious if these will pull full capacity or not. I really don't care what they look like, especially at this price point. These actually look pretty good for being grade B cells. The first thing I look for is if there's any gaps between the cells because it shows that there's gasification in one of the cells and it's expanding and you do not want that. These cells do prefer to be compressed so we're gonna actually have to hold these together somehow. Now these cells are in a series configuration with positive, negative, positive, negative and now we can add the bus bars. Uh oh, these threads are damaged. This one doesn't feel very good either. And this one actually went down all the way so we have one good terminal. So the rest of the terminals were actually pretty good, but these first two terminals that I messed with are very difficult. We're gonna have to tighten these down. Yeah, same with this one. This one looks a little damaged on the top. So I think if I tighten these down with an impact gun, <laughs> so if I tighten it down a bit more, I think they'll be all right. Be very careful though. It's very easy to strip these out. You do not want to over tighten them. Before we add a BMS, let's check the voltages. So pack voltage is 13.17, first cell 3.29, Second cell 3.28, 3.29, 3.29. That's decent. Now we need to add a BMS to this pack. And so I bought a 250 amp DALI BMS. How crazy is this? This is a 4S 250 amp. And it even has a cooling fan on it. I guess we could mount it like this. I wish this cable was longer so you could mount it elsewhere. But the balance cable is very limited in size too. So we have to mount it close to the battery. Look at how beefy this lug is compared to this terminal. This terminal actually has enough surface area for handling the current that this is rated for giving at 1C, but it's just this tiny little screw and look how many threads we have to work with. So actually I might go to the store real quick and get some studs because I don't like that. This will absolutely strip out if I try to put that thing on here. I mean, look at how many threads we would have available. So just got back from the store. I couldn't find studs, so we're gonna have to make our own. That's dangerous. And do not over tighten. That wasn't very hard, but I really wish these came with studs instead. Oh, that feels pretty good. Yeah, these all should be studs. I don't like these at all. I like how large these cells are. It is easy to organize the cables. For the positive terminal, we're gonna use a four aught gauge copper wire. I do not like working with 12 volts. Look at these cables, this is ridiculous. All right, that's the best I'm gonna get, it's not moving. And check it out guys, we should be able to pull 250 amps with this thing. So let's charge it up and do a capacity test first. Before I ruin these cells, I wanna ensure that these are pulling full capacity and then we can do high C rate discharge test. And before we activate this BMS so we can charge it up and test it, we're gonna ensure that each conductor goes out to its appropriate cell. Third cell and fourth cell. Because if you mix one of these wires up, you are gonna burn out this BMS instantly. Okay. And we have power, so this huge dally works just like all the other smaller dallies. You just have to short out B negative to P negative. And we're gonna use an Ames Power 75 amp charger. I do not like their inverters, but I really like this charger. I use it all the time. And you can adjust the current. I need to make a review on this thing. Anyways, let's charge it up. And we're charging at 70 amps, which means it will take four hours to charge this battery to full. And to speed up charging, I added a 60 amp charger. Oh crap, I overloaded the circuit, my bad. We're charging at 127 amps, you guys, that's incredible. And while it's charging at a fast rate, let's test the voltages. 3.47, 3.47, 3.47, 3.5. 3 so the first cell is a bit higher than the others. Oh, and this BMS is rated for 125 amps for charging current. I did not know that. 
So we're just above the limit. So this is actually a really good test for this BMS as well. So the cells were a bit off, so it took me a few hours to top balance these. I used two different power supplies to charge up this cell and this cell. And now they are the same voltage, so now we can do a capacity test. And check out how many chargers we have. We have four chargers to get these cells up to full capacity. And I'm gonna let them sit for just a minute and put the charger back on just to get that last bit of absorption. For this capacity test, we're not gonna use the CBA4. This would take 28 hours to conduct this test. So we're gonna use this instead. And for a 0.2C test, we need to pull 56 amps at 12 volts. The closest I can get is 51 amps. So it's gonna be about six hours for this test. It actually pulled full capacity, you guys. So five hours and 23 minutes, 281 amp hours. Incredible. I'm usually not prepared for when grade B cells actually pass the capacity test. Huh, wow. So we actually have a battery, so let's test this thing. Let's charge it up quickly and do a fast discharge. This is awesome. You guys are in for a special treat because I bought an inverter just for this test. We have a 4,000 watt, 12 volt pure sine wave inverter. And right now we're charging at 134 amps. So I'll come back in a couple hours and then we'll hook up the inverter. So it's been quite a few hours and it's pretty late, but I really want to do this test. So it's fully charged, so let's fire it up. And this inverter is huge, so we're going to pre-charge the capacitors with this little resistor. Always attach the large conductors to the inverter first and then connect the battery. I see people do it the other way around and that's very dangerous. So negative conductor to the BMS P negative, positive conductor over here. So let's charge up the capacitors. And we had no spark, very nice. But the weakest part of this system is these bus bars. And they might be able to handle 250 amps, but we're about to find out. Now we have 3,000 watts of heat gun power. So divided by 12 volts, that's exactly 250 amps. 270, let's see how long it can pull this load for. This is more than this BMS can handle. I'm surprised it didn't trip it yet. Actually, these bus bars feel pretty good. Yeah, this feels pretty good, guys. I think it's doing it just fine. First five minutes and these bus bars are still warm, but not hot. It's still going guys, after 16 minutes, we are still solid. And these bus bars are still holding up. They are not hot, they are only warm. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my tape job didn't hold up. We're at 280 amps, so we're doing a full 1C from these batteries. And the current is rising because the voltage is dropping. And nothing's hot, everything feels great. 3.07, 3.11, 3.1, 3.1. So this one is the lowest capacity cell. It was the first one to rise quickly and it's the first one to fall quickly. But it still pulls 280 amp hours, so it still passed the test. And this BMS is only rated for 250 amps. Looks like the fan is on non-stop, so there's a lot of heat generation right now. 292 amps, guys. It's about 42 millivolts of voltage drop on these conductors. Oh, this one's 111 millivolts. And across the BMS, 247 millivolts. The voltages are 2.9, 2.8, 2.8. 2.8 and it disconnected when the fourth cell hit 2.4. So everything worked as advertised. Isn't that crazy? That was a very impressive test. And considering just what you can do with this size of battery and inverter is just mind boggling. So those test results were impressive and I do like these cells. A lot of people on my forum have been using these for like the last few months and they absolutely like them. But let's talk about the downsides. First issue are these terminals. They are very small and easy to strip out. So I suggest everybody using studs and nuts instead of these little bolts that it came with. Next downside is the shipping speed is very slow. It took about two months for me to receive these. These are the last cells in my order from AliExpress. And besides that, these are pretty great. They are the cheapest option. These are like three to four times cheaper than other available options in the United States. Like 
280 amp hours, you guys. It's incredible. Now let's talk about this BMS. I bought this with my own money on Amazon. So Dali is selling large BMSs now on Amazon. Surprisingly, this pulled more than its rated current capacity for an hour. But some people on the forums are complaining that the new smart Dali BMS does not work that great or it's hard to use. So personally, I like to stick to the simple Dali BMSs that are not considered the smart ones and they do not have temperature sensors because they've never given me a problem ever. And this one is no exception. This one worked perfectly. But would I trust this on a large system? Absolutely not. I would personally use something else. Also, you should never ever have to use this much current. You should absolutely put these batteries into series for a higher voltage and use a higher voltage inverter. I just wanted to push this much current just to see if it could handle it. And it actually did, which is pretty incredible. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys liked the video. I'm pretty surprised that the cheapest products on the market actually work really well. So I will talk to you guys later. If you want to see some of these products, I'll have some links below. Also to the charger that I've been using. I really like that thing. So yeah, I hope you guys like the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.